Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're going to change the oil in the Cayman. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So even though the Cayman's oil monitoring system hasn't told me it's time to change the oil yet, I've gone through three track days. Well, really only two real track days or track weekends, which is four track days, whatever. I've had multiple track days now and I figured it wouldn't hurt to change the oil. So that's the uh, task I'm tackling today. Now, Keep in mind that my Cayman is a 987.2, the second generation of the 987. The 987, the original one, also known as the 987.1, had a completely different engine. I think that was an M97 engine, and this is a 9A1. So the process is basically the same, but in terms of uh, filters, they're completely different. So keep that in mind. If you want a, a video specifically about how to change the oil in the 987, 987.1, I'll give you a link right up here in this corner to the video I did last year about how to do that. So what are we gonna need in terms of supplies? Well, obviously, oil. The Cayman takes seven and a half or eight quarts of oil, depending on when you whether you also change the oil filter at the same time, the oil filter canister holds about a half a quart of oil. So I'm going to be doing a full change filter and everything. So I went with, uh, I've got 10 quarts of Mobile One full synthetic 10W40. And this is the European car version or formulation. I don't know what the difference is. I do know that in general, this tends to be less expensive than just the straight mobile one synthetic. So I don't think there's any problem with that. It says it's recommended by Porsche and I've had no issues with using it in the uh, my 987.1. As I said, today I'm gonna also be changing the oil filter. And the oil filter on the Caymans is a little different from your typical car. In a regular car, your oil filter tends to be that metal canister and it, the, it has the, the metal base plate on the bottom of it, and the filter is the element that's inside of it. Okay, well, on the Cayman, it uses a permanent oil canister that comes off, and you just remove the old cartridge inside, and you replace it with a new cartridge. One thing to look out for is make sure that your canister, not your canister, your cartridge includes the O-ring that you need to replace on the canister when you're doing an oil filter change. Now, to remove the oil canister, I'm going to be using this oil canister socket. They make these kind of things for regular filters also. But normally, I would use one of these. This is my favorite oil filter wrench. And it's got these three jaws that you put it around the canister. And when you tighten down or you turn it, these jaws clamp in. They dig in and grab the... Uh, the oil filter and spin it off very easily. However, obviously it crushes the oil filter when it does that. And we don't want to crush the canister on the Cayman because we have to reuse it. And I imagine since it's on a Porsche, it's probably, I don't know, $400. Another supply we're going to need is an aluminum crush washer. This is a washer that goes on the drain plug. And this is a disposable item that you replace every time you change the oil, or every time you remove the drain plug. Now, I bought a pack of 10 of these, so I don't really remember how much they were, but they were really very inexpensive, you know, unless you buy them from Porsche. But with getting the generic ones off of Amazon, they're like dirt cheap. As always, I'll give you a link down in the video description below. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to replace the stock oil drain plug with this anodized aluminum plug that has a magnetic end in it. And the idea behind this is that this uh, very strong rare earth magnet will capture 
metal particles if they're floating around in the um, in the oil. And so you pull out and visually you should be able to see, OK, there's some stuff there that shouldn't be there and let you know that you have some kind of a wear problem in your engine. Now, speaking of finding wear problems in the engine, I'm also going to capture a sample of the oil as I take it out and I'm going to send it off to Blackstone Labs for an oil analysis. Now, Blackstone will send you this sample capture kit absolutely free along with a prepaid label to send it to them. And they'll take the oil and they'll give you a very, very thorough analysis on it. The way that this works is that you go to their website and you purchase an inspection and you give them the details of what kind of an inspection it is, what you want them to look for. And then they give you a code that you include with the sample to show that you already paid for it. And then you get a nice email back from them with a very detailed analysis. And what I really like about the analysis you get, analysis that you get back is that they don't just list a bunch of numbers. They explain what those numbers mean and not just, okay, this number is the amount of chromium, the milligrams per million parts that we found in the oil. It tells you we found this and this is what it means. This is a normal reading. Don't worry about it. This is elevated. This could be the cause. Uh, we found this other thing and this combination of things we found means that you probably have this issue. It's it's really, really good. It's, it's an analysis that is obviously written specifically for your car. I saw one person who had his boat engine's oil analyzed and they were able to identify the fact that he had a leak, a crack somewhere in his engine that was allowing minute amounts of seawater to seep into his oil. So I, Blackstone Labs. I, Blackstone? Yes. Blackstone Labs. I highly, highly recommend you get done, this done at least occasionally when you change your oil. Tools we're going to need include an eight millimeter hex driver. Now this could be an eight millimeter Allen wrench um, or something like that. It could be a, an eight millimeter uh, bit that goes into your drill driver or your impact driver. I have a, a like a socket based version. Uh, I have a whole set of these, but this eight millimeter hex driver is to remove the oil drain bolt and put it back in. One new tool that I'm trying out today for the first time is my new Lincoln fluid drain tank. Uh, I've always wanted something like this, but I looked at it and was like, man, it's going to be a pain to sit there and, you know, this thing's full of oil and I got to try and drain it out into, you know, milk jugs or something to take it to the recycle center or to the auto parts store. And so I always passed on it. But then I found this one that I really like. And what's cool is it has this hose that's connected to the bottom of the tank. And then you put an air hose onto the, um, this fitting here, an air hose from the compressor. And it uses pressurized air to push the oil out of the canister or the, the tank down here through this hose and into whatever container you're gonna use to take to the recycle center. Um, I'm not sure exactly how well it's gonna work. Uh, it looks like it might be a bit messy, I'm not sure, but I really like the idea. And so, like I said, I just got it. I'm trying it out for the first time. I'll probably do a more extensive review on it in the future. One last thing that I'm going to be using is some nitrile gloves because this is a messy job and I really love these nitrile gloves from Gloveworks. They're, uh, they're called HD or Orange HD. I can't remember. I'll give you a, a description and a link in the video uh, description down below. They are super heavy duty. They last forever. They're not just one use disposable and I really like they've got um, Kind of probably kind of hard to see, but there's a nice stippled texture on it. it makes it easy to grip stuff, especially when you're dealing with something covered in oil. So yeah, highly, highly recommend these. Hey, speaking of gloves, let me throw in my normal plug for pug gloves. These are the best general purpose work gloves I've ever used. Now they're not good for this because it's messy, but I love these things. There's a it's a rubber coated palm and fingers except on the back it's not rubber coated so it breathes easily they they last forever 
I, I literally use them over and my wife uses them for gardening. I use them for working on the car, around the house. It gives you a, a really good grip, nice feel. You, you know, they're not bulky. And the best part, they're like a buck 25 a pair. Okay, I think I've covered all the supplies and tools that we need. So let's move up under the car and get started on this oil change. One thing that's very important when it comes to draining the oil out of the Cayman is that the car needs to be level to the ground. And the reason for that is the fact that this has a dry sump oil system instead of the traditional uh, sump panner or oil pan. And I did a, a video explaining and proving that that's true. I'll give you a link up in the upper corner there, like always to the video I did last year. Um, basically, if you've got a lift like I do, then you're picking it up level and you, you're good to go. Now, if you are um, working on the floor with a jack and you're just picking up the rear of the car, what you need to do then is get a fairly you know, like narrow drain pan on the floor put it under the drain plug, remove the drain plug, and then once it starts draining, lower the car back down to where it's just over the drain. Get, get it as level as possible. Just make sure you don't crush the drain pan underneath the car. That could be quite a mess. Then once it's finished draining, you pick it back up and go back to work. But it's really essential that you get the engine or the car level to the ground in order to drain it. So I'm going to remove the drain plug with my uh, catch or my nifty new oil drain tank underneath here. Give it a little more room because I'm going to need to capture some of that oil for the Blackstone Labs analysis. I've got to let it drain a little bit at first and then capture it once it's more like mid-flow. Start off by... Oof, <laughs> that was a little bit tight. Getting the uh, drain plug open. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this. I've got my uh, catch tube for the sample ready. The catch pan here for the drain tank has a, um, a grate built into it so that I can just take this drain plug and just drop it right in there. Oh, well, it's stuck to the thing anyway. So I'm going to let this flow a little bit. Do this right-handed. Then I'm going to catch some of this oil. Catch a lot of that oil. Whew. Make sure I've got a full tube here. And then I'll just let this keep draining. Let me tell you, this is so much easier and nicer than the old catch pan that I had before. And you can, you can see how that worked in the uh, other video I was talking about. Nothing really wrong with it. It was just more, con this is just way more convenient and easier to use. Okay, so I've got the sample bottled up here nice and tight. Blackstone gives you a really nice kit here. You take, you take that sample bottle, you put the oil into it, then that bottle goes into a sealable bag, and then that you wrap an absorbent cloth around that and put it into the uh, that black outside bottle that you saw, and then you take you put the lid on that, you tape it up, and you throw it in the mail. And this does take a while to really fully drain, so walk away for 10, 15 minutes, and it should be done. So looking here on the old drain plug, you can see that crush washer on there. We would just remove that, replace it, and then put this one back in if we weren't replacing it with a different uh, drain plug. Eventually. Okay, so just to give you an idea of how long this is, can go on, it's been an hour and a half. I went and had dinner, and it's still dripping, so obviously, we don't need to let this continue anymore. And after 15 minutes or so would have been plenty. So I'm just going to take and wipe this off some. And then insert the new 
um, drain plug with the replacement crush washer. And tighten this down. Get it sealed. Wipe it off a bit again. And then we torque this down to 37 foot pounds. There we go. A little more cleaning. And this part of the job is done. Now on the old 987.1 Caymans, this oil canister where the filter element lives was way down here and nice and easy to access. And now it's way up there, slightly over this cross frame member. And honestly, I'm, I'm worried about this, that this is going to turn into a screaming mess. The actual filter, uh, the wrench that fits this thing, is a 74.4 millimeter, and it costs about 50 bucks. The play, uh, where, you know, where I think I found it at Pelican Parts. It's a Ren line part. However, Advanced Auto Parts had this 74 millimeter for $7, and it appears that it actually fits. We're going to give it a try here. Yep, works perfectly. Okay, now let's see if I can get this out without making an absolute screaming mess. I'm not sure if it's loose enough to do by hand yet. No, it's not. Very tight quarters here. Okay, that feels pretty loose. I'm not sure if my big old head's in the way or not. If it is, I apologize. There's not a whole lot to see here at the moment. Okay, it's loose. Oh, okay, I am getting some dripping here. Oh, jeez. All right, what a stupid design. All right, I made a mess. I will be back. Okay, so uh, I kind of messed up and I forgot to press record or I pressed record and it didn't work when I started this. And so what I've done here is first I, I cleaned up all the mess and then I cleaned the canister and I swapped out the O-ring. I removed the O-ring by just getting a, a screwdriver in there, just working it around and working the, um, the ring up off all these threads and then put the new one and worked it down and notice that the O-ring doesn't go all the way down onto the lip. It's in the groove above the lip here. Okay. And I also like lubricated it a little bit. I just got some engine oil, some of the new engine oil, and just rubbed it on here to give it some lubrication when it's going back in. Now, what I also did here was I did what's called preloading the canister or preloading the filter. And I had not heard of this until a few years ago, but lately I see that a lot of manufacturers are asking you or telling you that this is the way you need to install a filter. And that is you take the filter, or in this case the canister, and you pour oil into it before you install it. And let it soak into the, uh, the filter media. And that way, the idea, I believe, behind this is that you have it like pre-charged so you're not going to have a completely dry start in the oil system when you start it up right after the oil change. So this now is well, up to about here with oil. I filled it up a little further and just let it, kind of let it soak into the element. Hopefully I can get this back in without spilling any of it again, but 
We'll see. All right, let's get this thing put back in. All right, again, I apologize if my big old hands and or head get in the way. Oh, boy, this is a pain to work up through here. It's, it's tight, so you got to kind of go up and over to get this lined up into the housing. And now, there, uh, first, I didn't think it was going to go. Takes a bit of a push to get the uh, filter onto the, uh, well, whatever it's going on to up in that, um, up in that housing. Just gonna hand tighten this. It's a lot of threads. Okay. All right, it's now in and then we come back with our torque wrench and the spec on this is 19 foot pounds of torque, which isn't much. A lot of take up on this. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't expect to have to back that off some. Redo that because I wasn't expecting it to come up that quickly. Okay, yeah, I could feel it bottom out. All right, oil filter is back in place and hopefully good. I remember my first oil change back when I was like 11 years old was a fiasco. And so I'm always a bit nervous doing this. So our last step is to put some more oil in. Now I'm paranoid about making messes. And I think from earlier, you can see I have good reason why I'm paranoid about making messes. So I like to take, put, take a big old trash bag and lay it in here in case it slips out of my hand and I spill stuff everywhere. And we just open up this little uh, gizmo here. Okay, now we're all set. We unscrew the uh, cap for the oil. Unscrew the cap for the oil, not the coolant. And then I've got this nice big funnel. Fits in there pretty securely. And I'm going to start off by using the rest of the five quart container that I used to, to preload the filter canister. And that way I know I put in five of the eight quarts and then I can carefully measure out the final three quarts to put in. And I also look under the car to make sure that it's not running right back out on the floor. And thank you, Lord Jesus. There is no puddle of oil underneath the vehicle. Come back and finish letting this drain completely. All right, that should be good. Put the cap on and save this for uh, sending back used oil. As I said before, the Cayman has an eight quart capacity. So we did change the filter. So we're gonna need to put eight quarts back in, supposedly. What I'm gonna do is that I put in five quarts, I know, because I emptied the five quart jug. Now, the, the jug has this little gauge here. You can see how much oil you poured out. Uh, this is the quart side here. <clears throat> So if I take it down to that mark, I will have put in one quart, two quart. So this would be three quarts. That would take us to eight quarts. So I'm going to come in here seven and a half-ish. And then I'm going to use the oil monitor system to find out exactly where we're at and then top it off from there. Okay, two. So... Still like another half a quart to get us to seven and a half quarts. Ah. 
Okay, that looks good. Cap back on and button it up. And kind of leave that for now. Now, one thing I don't like about the 987.2 versus the 987.1 is the oil measuring system. It's kind of a pain in the butt on the dot two because you got to go get the engine warm enough. And that doesn't just mean getting it up to temperature on the temperature gains. You got to go a lot further than that. The 987.1, you could start it up cold and it would measure right away within, uh, I think, 30 seconds to a minute, you could have a, a measurement. Maybe it wasn't as accurate. I don't know exactly why they switched to the system. Maybe this is more convenient because most people tend to think, oh, I should check the oil level. Let me pull over my already warmed up car and measure it real quick. Um, whatever the reason, it is what it is. I'll be back after figuring out how much oil I need to put in to fill it up. Okay, so we're in the process of measuring our oil level here. And we are three ticks below completely full. So as you saw, the measurement came at the bottom of the three bars in between the too little oil and the too much oil arrows, which is about where I expected it to be. I was looking here on the jar and we put in, we didn't hit quite to the halfway point between those two marks. So we put in right around seven point four quarts. Now, each one of those bars is equal to 0.4 quarts. Why 0.4? I don't know. Why not 0.5? Maybe because 0.5 was too big of a spread for being under and over full. Regardless, each bar is 0.4. So that means that the bottom one is 0.4, and then halfway through the middle one, which would put it right in the middle of the, of the gauge, would make it 0.6. So 7.4 quarts, 0.6 quarts, exactly eight quarts. So if we add in um, that other little over half a quart, maybe a bit more, it should come up to, it can't go into the middle, it'll probably go to the bar above it, which is right where I want it. Let's see how it works out. Okay, let's recheck our oil measurement and see how we did. Okay, we are all set to go. Now, before you take off, go down there, find that thumbs up button, give it a click, feed that YouTube algorithm and let them know that you enjoyed this video. And if you're not one of my subscribers, go ahead, click on that big old red subscribe button and join the channel. And finally, if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing here in the garage, including all the mods for Project 987.2, general maintenance, other cars and projects and stuff here in the garage that I'm working on, go click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.